Okay, let's see here how this is going to go. Bottle here, and let's see what happens. All right, it goes in and huh, starts to wedge, starts to get tighter. This is good. This is good. It's a good fit. Um, of course, I'm not going to use a plug this long. I'm actually going to cut it off uh, fairly uh, close up here. But I just wanted to make sure that I could get this in. And I'm going to continue to kind of whittle it down because I'm going to start to cut it off a bit. I'm going to cut it off at a length that's appropriate. But I wanted something that I could work with, so I needed to make it a little a little longer. Okay. All right. And then a thing about whittling or carving, right? So I'm in this room by myself and I can afford to kind of go down with my knife like that, right? Um, but if I was in a group or with people next to me, I don't want to do that because somebody might get in my way or I might slip or trip or whatever. Somebody gets hurt. So the best thing to do is to take whatever you're whittling and pull it towards you and keep the knife, keep the knife steady, okay? So that way, or as steady as you can make it so that you're not flying off. So that's just a bit of a tip there, a safety tip. Okay, so I think we have a, a plug that may work for us. It's about this size here, uh, about an inch and a half long. And, um, and we'll, it'll slide in here kind of snugly. And we'll um, continue to fix it so that it's watertight or as watertight as we can get it um, but then uh, I'm gonna sand this and stain this as well uh, so it matches but um, we got something that'll work and in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and I've got some residue from the um, the stain that we use I'm gonna wipe this off and then we're on to the next step all right so some things that will be needed for this project uh, is uh, some beeswax so i'm melting some beeswax here and um it's either beeswax or uh paraffin so this is paraffin kind of broken up and which is basically your basic candle wax and then this is um beeswax that's broken up and um i think from a uh, rustic standpoint your beeswax is probably going to be what you're going to come across to have uh, a, a, a access to um, however you got to fight the bees for it so it's not in a in a in a in a in a actual situation where I needed some wax I don't know that I would be challenging the bees on that even if I really wanted the honey um, if you don't if you do not know if you're allergic to bee stings or not you don't want to don't want to mess with the bees um, and if you don't know how to properly approach them and ask for and thus procure their um, their goodies their wax and their their honey I would avoid doing that but to keep this project kind of more or less natural uh, I've got some beeswax and you know I went online and got beeswax uh, in the summertime there's there's local there's people who keep bees that you can buy blocks of wax and things like that from um, for other uh, projects like making medicinal sal salves and ointments and stuff like that, lip balm and things like that. So, anyways, just you know, don't go chasing down the bees, wild, especially wild bees for their wax. If you get, yeah, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing. I wouldn't do it. Um, it's nice to know that they have it, um, <laughs> but um, you run severe risk of getting hurt. Uh, so, anyways, we're gonna need a uh, wax. And well, I want the wax. Um, we're going to need the wax for both the inside to coat the inside of our canteen uh, to make sure that the particulates don't get in the water and also help uh, waterproof it as well. And then we're going to want wax on the outside to see if we can provide a nice little sheen to the outside of our, of our uh, canteen. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me a paper towel, I'm going to put down some newspaper, get me a paper towel, and see if I can. Um, put some wax on the outside of this and get it give it a nice little buffing and a little polish okay so um might have been a little overzealous there uh, adding using the brush to paint on the wax 
Um, it's going to take quite a bit of buffing here. Plus, it's a little, it's got a texture to it. It's got a grip to it. But I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just that this is not something you want to leave with your car in uh, 90 degree heat. Uh, you're going to have wax stains. So, it'd probably be better just to take a block of hard wax and just kind of rub it on there and then buff it. That's the way I should have done it. Anyways, there you go. Um, still should work nonetheless. It's just got to be mindful not to leave it someplace where it's going to get too warm, too hot. All right, so next up we have our cool down wax. We're going to fill the inside in and swoosh it around. So I've got a funnel here. Again, metal funnel, not very primitive, but uh, for safety it'll work, okay? So what I want to do is um, take our wax. I want to pour it into our uh, gourd. Set this aside. And then take a cover here. And I want to cover this up real well. And then I want to slosh this around inside of the our gourd. Splash this around real good. Cover all of the parts. Okay. Make sure all the insides are covered. Now, the thing is, is that Um, the wax is going to give us a little bit of a taste, which is fine. Taste is going to taste like honey. I'm okay with that. Um, paraffin is going to have less of a taste. Um, if you burn or if you render uh, old candles that you have, a lot of them are scented. Um, if you want to, re if you're going to use reuse that um, the paraffin from those old candles that you may have. Um, I'd be careful of that. Make sure that there's no uh, res residual oils in there that can be harmful to you. Um, <clears throat> but your water or liquid or whatever you're going to put in there is going to most likely taste like <laughs> whatever the scent is. You know, lavender, patchouli, whatever. Um, so uh, be mindful of that. Be careful of that. So um, the inside of this is coated with the uh, beeswax. I uh, could have used paraffin, but I'm going to use beeswax for this product. It's kind of warm, so, but we'll let that cool down. Um, I want to um, also coat the uh, plug here with some wax as well, uh, just so that we can make sure that we have a watertight seal when we go to sit, fit this in here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and dip this in our wax and coat it. I'm going to use a pair of chopsticks and try to get this done before the wax starts to harden. And then I'll rotate this around. Like so. So I just want to coat the, the plug with some wax here and I can go ahead before it fully dries and kind of start to kind of create a seal or put some wax in here okay, around. Okay so we kind of had to start over with um, our plug because the uh, size of the plug was more um, oval shape than it was circular and the opening that we created uh, is more circular than it is oval. So it wasn't as watertight as it could or should be, should have been. So what I've done is I'm gone, I've added, uh, created another plug here, and then I've added some wax and pushed it down um, because this is just the right size, but I know there's gonna be some gaps. So I've added, I melted some more wax and I'm kind of molding or creating a seal around here that once the wax hardens, it'll it'll kind of help create the the um, seal that we that we need or that we want um, so I'm just gonna let this harden a little bit and then we can go ahead and give this a, a try and all I did was just kind of dip the plug in the wax and then as it starts to cool before it gets too hard I pushed and molded it and then I set the, the plug into our um, our canteen here and then um, kind of shaped and, and, and shape the wax around there and, and while the wax is still uh, malleable. So 
Um, we'll see how that goes and then we'll try it out. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, the kind of the, the wax seal that we're creating here and make it moldable and we can kind of shape it. Um, my only concern is if it gets really, really hot, if I was in the desert with this, you know, what would happen? The wax would probably start to melt. So that's the caveat. That's something I want to keep, let you, to keep in mind when using wax. I probably have to make a, a plug that really is just a tight fit. Um, without any wax so that's another option too anyhow um, we're going to try this out just fill a canteen of water I don't have to fill it all the way up I just want to test to see if it's watertight if the plug is put the plug in there and yeah and a little bit at first but uh, for the most part, it's serviceable. The water ain't gonna just leak out on us if it tips over. Hopefully not hanging upside down for a long period of time. But yeah, this will, this will, this will work in a pinch. So there's some areas here that we can kind of tighten down. This will work in a pinch. It'll be all right. Uh, again, don't want this to be, you know, I'm not going to have this upside down or anything like that. And hopefully it doesn't tip over on me. And so next, that's the, the next project is to, the next phase is to create a carry system for this so that it's more upright. But for the most part, you know, water ain't going to, we're not going to lose too much water, if anything. All right. So we have um, our uh, canteen. Our gourd that's all set to go and um, it's more or less we made it more or less watertight I could tweak it some more and all this and that I just don't want it you know gushing out if I tip it over or if it ends up upside down so that's kind of the goal I'm shooting for <clears throat> uh, for something that's rustic and again I could tweak it and mold things the, the, the wax around the plug and everything like that to make it uh, super watertight uh, if I want to or if you want to so if you choose to try this so the next thing is we're going to figure out our, our um, suspension system so there's lots of ways to attach this and um, you know I, again I would invite you to uh, if you're inspired to check out pinterest.com and you know just do a search for um, gourd birdhouse gourds or gourd can canteens or um, bottle gourd canteens or containers and you'll see all kinds of carry systems and ways people are, are doing this um, and you know again a basic one would be just to kind of wrap this around in this particular shape of gourd wrap this around you know make basically make a bottle sling or something like that and attach it to your to your belt or <clears throat> your pack or whatever so real basic real quick and dirty you know nothing real complicated about it and again you got your plug here so you just put your you pop your plug in there and then um, you know you're, you're good to go um, but I'm gonna do something a little bit more elaborate and uh, I've already taken the time to create basically a bag or a basket for uh, this gourd uh, canteen for the particular shape that I have here I have a video on here that uh, on how to make a net bag and basically this is what I did is I kind of made a net bag uh, that is approximately the size that I need for the base of this shape of, of uh, uh, bottle bottle gourd so I've strung um, some cordage through the loops the main loops of the uh, net bag here and all I have to do is kind of cinch it up so I kind of hold on to things that wants to get away from me but I can just cinch it up and uh, it kind of it, it cinches up nicely and we have um, we have a nice little kind of decorative uh, netting or bag around our gourd here <clears throat> so to finish this off 
using this sort of configuration. And again, I'll post a video below on how to make a net bag uh, inspired by um, uh, Miss Sally Pointer uh, and her uh, Roman Legionnaires net bag tutorial. I always wanted to know how to do that. Could never figure it out, could never see any other resources and I stumbled upon hers and I was like, awesome. And she explains it very well. I tried my best to explain it. I, <laughs> I don't do it justice. So um, I would definitely, uh, uh, if you check out my video on how to do this, there's a link to her channel and to that specific video if you want to know how to make this sort of uh, net <clears throat> carry uh, configuration for your canteen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach our plug and before I tie everything down uh, if you remember when we started out uh, we had we created a groove in our uh, plug here so basically that's what this is for is for our lanyard and I just uh, double twisted uh, to two pieces of this juke cordage store-bought juke cordage and it's going to sit around just like this so it's not going to go anywhere how I'm going to tie this on here though so that it doesn't go anywhere is I'm going to go ahead and I want to wrap this around I'm going to take this is the running in using knot terminology running in I'm going to wrap this around once maybe twice okay I'm going to give myself a little bit more length there we go so I'm going to wrap this around once and then twice and then I'm going to run this there's an opening here I'm off camera excuse me there's an opening right here where my index finger is I want to run the running in up through that and then I want to cinch everything tight to that Okay, so I just want to kind of push and pull and cinch it really tight onto that space. Okay, so now this is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. And then what I can do is I can lash this down using some common whipping or I can simply cut it. But I'm afraid that if I cut this, this will work itself loose and I'll lose my plug. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to go ahead and use some common whipping and um, lash this down and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back and then we'll, we'll attach this to our uh, carry system. Essentially this is how this should look. Okay, for common whipping, uh, which is very useful, sort of like lashing or not, if you will, is I want to make a bite or a loop in my cordage, like so. And I have a shorter end and a longer end, which is my running end. And I just make a loop and I lay it against whatever I'm trying to whip. I take my running end or my longer end and I just start to wrap everything around towards the loop that I just laid down okay so I'll just keep wrapping this around this kind of is a nice neat little finish not necessary but it adds a kind of a finished look to it and it'll keep it'll, it'll keep you from cutting <laughs> uh, cordage that you may need later or um, it'll it'll also help lay down uh, strikes extra strands and stuff so essentially this is sort of the configuration of what we have going on so I just got that wrapped around like that and then now I want to take this and my last wrap I want to take this and run it through the loop my running end goes through the loop like that Then I can kind of hold this now that short end that we were talking that I, we had I was talking about I'm going to take that and we want to um, pull it, pull it through. Okay, I'm gonna take this and I want to just kind of pull it, and I want to kind of cinch it and kind of pull it underneath just a little bit. All right. So now we have something that looks like this, and I can take my cutting tool, in this case, piece of scissors, uh, some pair of scissors, and um, I just snip the ends close to my whipping, like that, and then. We have a nice finished 
sort of end here. Okay, it adds a little bit of weight but, um, because of the type of cordage that this is, but um, it'll work in a pinch. So that's common whipping. All right, so um, <clears throat> we want to attach this to our carry system here. So I'm going to go on the opposite end and I want to plug this in here, put our plug in, and then I want to give myself enough room and with my length here and I'm going to go ahead and find some place and just kind of tuck it underneath. Get myself some room like that. Should be good enough. Should be good enough. And then just a regular old overhand knot should do it. Um, and then you can adjust it later at a later date if you need to. Um, you know, you could you could do a double, you know, you do a granny knot to tie it in, but for this intents and purposes, I think this will be just fine. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tie a knot in the rest of the length of this um, lanyard here. Okay, that way it won't slip. And then I can cut this free. And now this is attached to our um, basket or our net and then I have this length to use for another project so I just twisted a, a long length and was a, have been able to use this for a multiple uh, projects here and I just keep putting knots in it so it doesn't come undone so we can set that aside now we're almost done here but now to finish off a carry system we're going to go ahead and add kind of the handles here and all it is is just a loop, a length of cordage with a loop in it and a knot, okay? And I made it kind of long, but uh, so that I can adjust it later if I need to. But again, um, the string here, that's the drawstring for our net, I want to go underneath it. And then I want to loop over the neck and then on the opposite side I want to find a place to again go underneath uh, the drawstring and then pull it so that it is even okay so we have an even length so that it can hang evenly okay so there's that so all the bits are attached we can go ahead and I'm going to just do uh, a double overhand knot, or not double overhand knot, but I'm just going to do double overhand, like the beginning of doing a bow, tying your shoes. And then just kind of sense everything up. Okay. And actually, I will sense everything up before I do that, because we want to finish it up this type of cordage is juice cordage has a lot of hair on it. it likes to catch on itself so it can be misbehave a bit so what we want to do is go ahead and we want to just kind of just kind of cinch everything up pull everything nice and tight now that we got everything locked on okay, like so like that and then now we can do our overhand. <clears throat> and do a double overhand. I'll just do a single right now. And then there we go. That makes everything nice and tight. Switch that up. And then what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm not gonna cut anything. I kind of like these little dangly bits here on this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a bow into this. Uh, so just like you're tying your shoe. And I may change it later, but that's why I didn't cut anything and I've left it the way it is. So now we just have a nice bow. Things are not going anywhere. Got some little dangly bits here. 
and I could double knot this, double bow it, and I can always undo it later. Just like so. Okay. So now what we have is we have our carry our, our lanyard that allows us to kind of carry it. And then we have our plug lanyard that now the 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 the, the the plug is not going to go anywhere and then we just attach it back on there and we're pretty much all done um, as far as this design is concerned there's lots of ways to do this there's many ways to handle this I'm sure people are going to have their own ideas or done this six ways from Sunday and that's cool that's great that's awesome um, you know this is the way I'm doing it um, I think it'll work for me um, it'll be just fine as far as I'm concerned. The other thing um, that, you know, the carry system, this may work in a pinch, you know, this is real quick when you have these these um, bashings like so. But I may, you, you may later on decide to make uh, or attach to a, lo a thicker strap. And this is some finger woven, again, juke cordage, store-bought, um, just because it's cheap and easy to get versus going out and harvesting and processing you know milkweed dog bane yucca etc etc to get this amount of cordage to make this length and width of a strap it's possible i know how to do it but i went on ahead and just got store bought stuff because it was quick so anyways <clears throat> i can tie this or i can attach this to my, the start of my uh the our straps here you know, shorten them up and I can attach to the length and now I have a thicker um, strap to uh, sling across my shoulder or, or attach to my kit or whatever. So this is just an idea. You can go even that far if you want to. You could probably find a way to attach the top and the bottom so now you kind of have a way that it hangs like this, you know, it hangs this way. Um, so you, there's all kinds of ways you can play with this. And, you know, actually you, making something like this and utilizing it uh, in the field will definitely let you know what you need to do to make it um, definitely, you know, useful. So uh, I've been playing with this for the past couple of weeks, the past two or three weeks uh, with these gourd bottles and the birdhouse gourds and just, you know, it's been kind of fun. It's been interesting. And so, yeah. So anyways. This is my method of how to make a gourd canteen, and uh, I've made a few of them, and uh, there you go.